Frankenstein, I think, is uh, it's like a modern creation myth. I think it's uh, a classic English text that hasn't been done for quite a long time. And uh, as such, it has a lot of resonance and, um, and really strong dramatic possibilities. Quite a lot of what I've done has been influenced by what the director wanted to do. In this case, Danny Boyle did become involved uh, many years ago. I was very keen for a long time to keep in Walton, the, uh, the Arctic explorer who rescues Victor Frankenstein. And I thought there might be something there, but as we, uh, as we went through it over, as I say, many years, we, we whittled it down more and more and went more and more into the, the central story. You know, our play is, it's not exactly a two-hander, but there are only two big characters in it, and that's Victor Frankenstein and his creature. The thing which we really wanted to get to is the, the great central dynamic of the book. And so I sacrificed an awful lot around the edges. Well, you're given certain parameters from the book. We know, for instance, that Victor Frankenstein is a young man. And so if, uh, if we're remaining reasonably faithful to Mary Shelley, it would be a mistake to, to portray him as he so often is in the movies, as a kind of 45-year-old scientist, rather camp scientist. Um, in, in her story, he's, he's been away at university for six years. He's like a postgrad student. So he is not much older than 30. Uh, and that's how we've cast him. If Mary Shelley's Frankenstein is a gothic novel, it's almost the first, if not the very first. There might have been one before then. It kind of creates the genre by itself. To me, it, I don't find a genre very useful. I don't start with style. I think style is determined by content. Form is determined by content for me. It's always content first. What is the story? And then what should be the look of it? Secondly, I think the look of a play on a stage is something which is determined largely by other people than myself. Other people design a set, design costumes, design lighting, design soundscapes, and indeed direct it. I think we're doing something which hasn't been done before, which is to tell the story, at least initially, from the creature's point of view. We, we don't start with um, we do start with the moment of creation, but n not told from the perspective of the scientists, which is how it's usually told. We tell it from the perspective of the experiment rather than the experimenter, and a great deal of what we're trying to do in this show is, uh, is explore what it feels like to be that experiment. That was something Danny Boyle and I decided on years ago, that um, we felt this, this would be a new approach to the story, and we certainly don't think it's been done before. And it, we do it partly as a counter to almost all the movies, of which there are many, um, which usually deny the creature a voice. He's usually called the monster, and he usually doesn't do anything except grunt. And um, that's not faithful to Mary Shelley. Mary Shelley's novel, as anybody who's studying it knows, is this great central narrative told by the creature about his, his birth, his creation, his education, and his desire to find his creator and seek not exactly revenge, but to make a bargain, um, which the, his creator then breaks, at which point he decides he is seeking revenge. 